organized by the medical faculty research community of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. Uh, skills required to effectively review and discuss the literature and to really master the art of critical appraisal. And uh, assisting us in our task today is our very own Dr. Yasit Matanga Sindha, a uh, lecturer at uh, the Department of Anatomy, Faculty of Medicine, uh, University of Colombo. And uh, joining us uh, in today's session uh, is uh, Dr. Dilshani Bisanayaka, Senior Lecturer of the Department of Physiology, uh, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, and the Head of the Research Promotion and Facilitation Center as well. Um, so, Dr. Yasit is really no stranger to the student community here at faculty. Uh, many of us uh, will remember him as uh, an enlightening presence at um, both anatomy uh, dissections as well as uh, the weekly reviews. Uh, but Dr. Yasit is not uh, known nearly uh, for his role as uh, a hands-on teacher, but uh, he, has, um, he has been a coordinator and a collaborator for many uh, student uh, research projects. And uh, he himself has a very uh, illustrious uh, research career, uh, having authored over 40 peer-reviewed uh, publications. And uh, he himself is a reviewer of um, multiple um, international journals. Uh, he uh, has won several awards uh, for a best paper. And to name a few would be uh, his uh, award at uh, the annual academic sessions of the College of Ophthalmologists in the year 2017, uh, the College of Surgeons of Sri Lanka in 2018, uh, the Sri Lanka Association of Urological Surgeons in 2018, and uh, the uh, annual academic sessions of the Anatomical Society of Sri Lanka in 2019. Uh, and he has also received the National uh, Research Merit Award for Scientific Research in 2017, and uh, Dr. Yasit is currently reading for his PhD at the Australian Regenerative Medicine Institute of the uh, Monash University. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I would uh, now like to uh, invite Dr. Yasit uh, to conduct the session. And I would also like to remind the participants, um, please do uh, ask your uh, colleagues to join in this session as it will now um, uh, as it is, uh, as it uh, will now take place. And um, we would also like to remind you that this session will be uh, very interactive and we have organized a few um, interactive uh, sessions where uh, our participants will be divided into uh, smaller breakout rooms. And uh, these activities will have to be done within these breakout rooms as small uh, group discussions as uh, we also have a few polls uh, planned for uh, planned out for you as well. So now, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yasit uh, to uh, take over the session. Uh, yes, Dr. Yasit. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yes, you're audible. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you so much. Uh, and a very good evening. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me for this session. Uh, and uh, first of all, I should... Uh, appreciate the initiative by uh, Medical Faculty Research Com uh, Committee uh, to start something like this. And it shows that uh, the students are more and more interested in uh, doing research, uh, which is also my passion. So uh, without further ado, we'll start our session. I'll share my screen. Um, ah, yes, we can. Um, yeah, now. Maybe. Yes, we can see the screen, so yes. Okay, uh, are there any black spots or anything on sides? Uh, or can you see the whole screen? Uh, yes, sir, we can see. This Perhaps is, we can see now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Yeah. So before starting, I'll just give you a brief outline on what the journal club is because uh, so in a journal club, uh, the idea is everyone has to read the paper and come and then one of the students will present it uh, to the um, audience and then there will be a discussion on 
how the uh, author could have improved this, whether what they say is exactly correct or what are the new things that they have done, what are the uh, like creative stuff that they have done in this research and how you can incorporate them into your uh, research. So that's the basic idea of a journal club. But uh, since uh, 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 I think uh, most of you will not have read the paper, so uh, the research committee and I had a discussion and then uh, we decided to have a little bit of a different plan. Uh, so I will be giving you some opportunity, some time to read some sections of the paper and we'll uh, have a discussion then and there. So there will be breakout rooms. So please feel free to ask questions from your um, uh, mediators there. And uh, this is a very informal session. So whenever you want to stop and ask questions, please feel free to do so. Uh, I am unable to monitor the chat screen. Uh, so uh, the moderators, I guess, will help me in uh, uh, telling me what's happening there as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, to uh, start with, uh, so I think you all have had uh, some inputs regarding how to do, how to conduct a review, how to search databases. So my idea is not to do that because you already know and it's very easy to search data, but what I am trying to do is how to incorporate it in, in your review and how to write your report or review or your journal article uh, in a publishable or uh, presentable manner. Uh, so for that, I selected this study, which uh, I have uh, published last year. Uh, it's a very simple study. Uh, and I think all, all of you can understand the concepts uh, very easily, except for the statistical analysis is a little bit beyond, but for the scope of this uh, event, uh, that is not very necessary. If you can have a brief understanding about the literature review, that would be enough. So let's start with the first poll. So uh, I have provided two different methods of writing um, in, in a journal article. So if you are writing for a journal article, which uh, method will you prefer to write? So just take like one minute or two minutes and then uh, I think one of the mediators could start the poll after like one minute and please let me know the result. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I think more than 60% have voted. So uh, I don't know whether you can also see the result. Uh, it's exactly 50-50. So like, so I'll end my poll now. Yeah, it's like 50-50. So which is exactly what I have uh, uh, expected. So there are actually two ways of writing your um, literature review. Or but particularly if you are writing for a journal article, the main idea is uh, to be very simple. So we'll discuss why do we have to do this. So, uh, and at the end of uh, that session, I think you will understand which uh, option is better in your review. So 
Um, what is the um, yeah? So, what is the basic idea of a literature review or your uh, review in a journal article? So, it is basically to sell your product. So, what what do I mean by selling your product? So, if you are writing a journal article, you should be able to capture your audience, the journal editors, reviewers, and the uh, readers, and also if it's your TCs, so you should be able to capture the uh, the lecturers who will be reviewing. So it's basically you should be able to deliver a product which really, really uh, captures the audience. So for that, you all not only need the quality of your uh, product, but uh, also a way to attract the readers. So to attract the readers, there are two main uh, things that you have to do. First thing is keep it very, very simple. So what do you mean by uh, keeping it simple? Uh, so idea is to have very simple English language and just try to convey your idea, like one idea in one sentence, rather than trying to uh, combine several sentences and make a nice long sentence so it doesn't work like that you have to keep it very 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 simple and also tell it like a story for example uh when you are telling a story first you introduce the setting you introduce the characters and then you start building this scenario so it's like imagine your audience have no idea have the minimum base minimum idea about your project is so tell in a way that it's very easy to understand and also have a nice flow. So we'll further discuss about this uh, in, my, uh, in a moment. So if I go back to my poll, so out of those, uh, these two options, if I were to write it to a journal article, I would uh, use the second method, or, uh, the option B, which, summarizes your idea and tells it in an easy way so that the reader can very easily grasp your point. Uh, but of course, uh, when it comes to one of, of your theses, which is very big and where you have to deliver a lot of things in your literature, you have to critically analyze, it's okay to go a little bit beyond and describe what the setting is, what kind of research, uh, what kind of uh, uh, participants are there in a little bit elaborated manner, but still try to deliver the most important point in a simple manner rather than trying to put everything in your report or thesis. Okay, so moving forwards, just remember these two concepts, keep it simple and tell it like a story, like a nice flow. So uh, I have shared my, uh, uh, the paper in the chat box. I think you have all already received it. So first activity is summarize the key messages of the introduction session. So there's the introduction session, the methods, results, and discussions. So the first part is introduction, just read it and try to summarize the key messages using bullet points. Like use like say three to five bullet points and try to do, uh, try to summarize what really I'm trying to say in this, but not the content, but what is my idea? Okay, so it may be a little bit tricky. So it's all right. So I'll discuss in your uh, breakout rooms. And uh, at the end of the session, at the end of 10 minutes, one, I will ask a few of you to uh, tell your answers. And if you can finish it before 10 minutes, please do come. So if everyone is back in the main room, we can start the discussion. Okay, uh, over to moderators to start the breakout.
Uh, so I think you're on mute, sir. Just okay. Okay. Uh, is everyone back from the breakout groups? Uh, yes, everyone has. Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to listen to some of the summaries that I uh, that we uh, gathered. Uh, maybe Mindra can ask someone to. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so summarize. let's yes let's go. Uh, let's first start with the first breakout room. Uh, so. Who, can I know who the uh, moderator was for the first breakout room? Breakout room number one. Yeah, I so, mean, it uh, was me, I think. Uh, ah, so yes, the breakout room. So uh, uh, the thing was, we had, didn't have enough time because uh, the breakout room was created a little late than the others. So uh, can you like... So, Minora, shall, shall I present her? Ah, yeah. yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Dulanja, yes, you can <laughs> go ahead. So, uh, our group identified mainly key uh, four key points from the introduction. Uh, so, the first one is that uh, thoracic trauma is a significant cause that causes mortality and morbidity to patients. Okay. So, the second point was that the demographic patterns are very different and the Sri Lankan data are not adequate. The third okay. point was, therefore, uh, doing such research is important and the objectives, hence the objectives of the research. The fourth point was the importance of correct diagnosis, importance of, importance of making a correct diagnosis and uh, the importance of this kind of research in uh, gathering data which will help making a correct diagnosis. Those are the key four points we identified as the groups. Okay, okay, that's very, very good, very good. <laughs> Uh, since we are running out of time, I think I will directly go to the uh, presentation. Uh, well, yeah, you uh, can you see the screen? Not yet. Not sir. yet. Okay, now can you see it? Oh, yes, sir, we can see. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, I heard everything from me. I mean, that was kind of the basic idea and you have discussed it very well. So uh, if I were to summarize, I would say thoracic trauma is a major health problem. So I told you we have to sell our product. So if we have to sell it, we have to say that this there is a big problem. There's a huge problem like this. And then as the second point, I, I said uh, the outcome can be improved by understanding the different de demographic patterns of trauma. So we can predict things by knowing the demographic patterns, but there's a, then we have to say there's a knowledge gap, especially in Sri Lanka in developing countries. We don't know why, uh, what the demographic patterns are in order to improve this. So if I were to summarize, I will say these three are the main, main three points in my introduction, which incorporates the literature review. Uh, so uh, this is something I learned from my previous uh, advisors and supervisors. So if you want to write an article or your report or thesis, first create an outline. It's like telling a story. So uh, as you imagine, you are trying to develop a plot of a story or plot outline of uh, a novel or something. So first you would uh, like write the bullet points. This is what I'm going to say. And then after that, you will be uh, uh, like adding small, small points into this to expand the idea. So that is basically how you would write a, a paper or your thesis or literature review, whatever. So uh, this is how I started this paper. So first I wrote these three points and this is how I am going to sell the product. So after that, when I, uh, I further subcategorize or expanded each product. So if I am to say thoracic trauma is a major health problem, we have to say how common it is in, in the world or in the developing countries and how severe it is, so morbidity and mortality. And uh, then 
we can just maybe tell about the trends. So, you know, the facilities have been improving over the past few years, but still, is it getting resolved or is it getting worse? So you can have a simple outline like that. And when you are reading, further reading, at more and more points. So um, say when you are reading this paper, you found something like this, thoracic promycin, 50% of the polychromic cases. So put it in that place. Or if you find something about the severity, so uh, just make a note in the second place. So, uh, you know, uh, when you're searching databases, you will have a lot of data uh, and it is very difficult to organize it. So if you have an outline like this and start putting things in the correct place, it becomes very, very easy at the end. Uh, so that is one point that I wanted to emphasize. So first, make the scaffold or the outline and try to fill in the gaps there. Okay, so second one. So uh, second of all, in a journal article, where does the literature review really fit in? Is it only an introduction, methods, resource, discussion, or it's a combination of introduction and discussion, or maybe all of the above? So what is your idea? Let's have like uh, 45 seconds for this poll. Can you please open the poll? Okay, okay. Uh, so I think now you can see the results. Uh, so I see like 18% thinking it's only the introduction. So a little bit. So I think the uh, best answer is introduction and discussion or something. It's all of the above. So uh, good again. So uh, literature review in the sense. Uh, you have to read papers, read literature, and um, see how it can improve your art, a journal article. And it may not only be important in the introduction. So uh, you might have seen when you read papers, some people cite, uh, like put references and cite uh, the available literature in the introductions as well as discussion. And especially sometimes in the methods, you will see, uh, you can say, okay, this person have used this kind of a questionnaire, which shows a very good uh, sensitivity to uh, see or identify depression or something like that. So uh, your review, literature review, or what you read should not be uh, only contained in the introduction and discussion. You can always have them in the methods and especially in results. So in most of the medical research, we don't see this happening. We don't uh, put references in the results, but if you read some papers like in Nature, Cell Science, those are the biggest journals in the biggest multidisciplinary journal. So there you can see even in the results, they say, okay, this they, you can quote something and say, this may be the reason for this result, even in the and result section. So uh, mainly it comes into the introduction and discussion. Yes, you're correct. And sometimes in the methods and very rarely, but sometimes it happens even in the results. So when you uh, plan your journal article, when you write these things, so whenever you read an article, so uh, try to link everything of your literature review into each of these sections as necessary. Uh, okay. Um, so a small activity, another small activity. Uh, so there are two, uh, 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 there are two paragraphs from two different uh, articles. The first one is the one that we are discussing today. And the second one is something that I wrote as a medical student uh, in the fourth year. So. This was also published in, as a full paper in a conference proceeding. 
And what I want you to do, so that I'll give you a brief introduction about the second article because you have not come across it. So I looked at a drug called warfarin, which is a blood thinning medication, uh, and how people take this and uh, how uh, knowledgeable these uh, people about warfarin and how it helps in controlling their blood thinning. So um, this is a, com uh, com a comparison between the uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the discussion part in these two different articles. So your, I, uh, your uh, activity is to find one major difference between A and B. What is the main difference in these two different paragraphs? Uh, we can have the breakout rooms and we'll try to finish it in like five minutes if possible. <laughs> Can the moderators ask their opinion from like uh, maybe yes. three breakout rooms quickly? Yes. Okay. Uh, Priya, of course, uh, uh, moderator of one of the breakout rooms. So can Priya, uh, is there a volunteer from your group? Yeah. Uh, from breakout room two, we discussed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just give the main thing that we found out. One yeah. was that in uh, A, throughout it was uh, rib, the percentage of rib fractures is compared in all three of the studies. In the first one, it was 80.7 and so on. But okay. as in B, they had talked about different things at different points. In like the initial, they had given a knowledge score mm -hmm. and then they had talked about the pass rate. So it's kind of difficult to compare. Okay. And then okay. again in A, they had compared those three studies and then they have given possible reasons for the, the difference that they had observed. But in B, there has, there's no such differences that are given like that. So those are the main okay. things that we found out. Okay, very good. Maybe I can ask from one more group. Okay, very good. Uh, right. Can we have a... Yes. Uh, Gitmo, uh, you are a moderator, right? Gitmo? Uh, sorry, Minula, I am not the moderator. But... Oh, right. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, were you part of a group that uh, discussed this? And... Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Can you tell what those uh, discussion points were? That's... Yes. At, uh, so in addition to what uh, Priyat said, uh, first of all, what we know, this was the difference of referencing method. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, in A, it's uh, Vancouver uh, method. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in text citations are Vancouver and uh, in B, I think it's either Harvard or uh, APA. Okay. Uh, those were the ones that we we also uh, like. Uh, it was mentioned about the uh, points that uh, Priyat mentioned earlier, and in, in addition to both that, points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think you all have done a good job. You have identified the differences. Maybe from my side, uh, I haven't given you an, uh, a complete uh, overview about my second uh, the, 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 the second article. So actually the pass rate and everything is uh, based on the knowledge score of Warframe. So it may not be uh, a difference, but uh, I'm really happy that you all found out there's a difference when it comes to the possible um, comparing the reason uh, for these differences. So one major thing that we see when we are correcting the um, your literature reviews or reviewing a journal article is uh, some, some authors, they just, or oh, mainly the students, they just summarize the points like what, have, what I have done in B rather than saying why it is different. So the most important point in discussion is to have a critical discussion, say this may be the reason for this difference. So uh, I think you all have figured it out. So the main difference is I have given the possible reason for comparatively high fit fractures in my study. But uh, so this is, so I have deleted this part uh, when I gave you the activity. So this is what I have written in 
um, my original publication. So here also I have tried to give the reason why there was a difference of this uh, uh, knowledge score. So maybe it's because the researchers did not standardize the setting and they let the patients take questionnaires home and they could have looked at books or they could have asked their family members and filled it. So it could have biased the results. That may be the reason for this. So here again, we don't know if this is the exact reason. So uh, when we are writing a discussion, we have to be very careful. So if we are not very sure if this is the reason, we have to always express the uncertainty, uh, like we use hedging expressions. For example, you could say the possible reason, perhaps maybe it could be because of this. So if you want to get more marks in your report, in your literature review, always try to give an explanation, a plausible explanation. Don't, uh, you know, make up things. So based on your evidence, based on your literature, try to give a reason and uh, describe rather than just summarizing what, you, what others have done. So that's what I wanted to do. Uh, okay, so the next point is, so know your audience. You have to know who are you targeting. Uh, for example, uh, when you write, so this is ex exactly what happened when I wrote this journal article and I submitted it to a journal. So what happens is, so editor first look at this article and see if this is uh, potentially good. And if thinks uh, this can be, this is publishable, he or she will then distribute it among some other experts to review this and they will send us the comments. So one major comment I got was the readers no, uh, may not be aware of the trauma system in Sri Lanka compared to the North American trauma system. So you have to be very careful when you are writing the journal articles, always think who are you writing to. It's good to think that the readers have no idea about the system. That's fine when you first uh, write your report, but say if you are writing to a journal, say if it's a hematology journal, so you don't have to describe very basic concepts in your uh, in related to hematology, but if you are writing to something different, say for example, uh, this was a Canadian respiratory journal, so if you are writing to someone in North America, uh, you have to give an explanation about your setting, like in a developing country perspective, what is happening in these countries. So activity three, which does not need breakout rooms, have a quick look at uh, the discussion section and see which paragraph introduces the Sri Lankan trauma system. Uh, the moment you find the answer, maybe you can put it in the chat box, like first, second, third or fourth uh, paragraph in the discussion. And then we when we have a good amount of uh, um, answers, maybe a moderator can tell me the answer because I can't see the chat box. Uh, so we have two answers. So yeah. both answers yeah. say that if it's the first paragraph of the discussion. Okay, yeah. Since we are running out of time, uh, we'll uh, move forward and thank you for that answer. So yeah, uh, so the discussion you will see uh, in the first paragraph, I have tried to uh, uh, give an overview about the trauma system in Sri Lanka by saying Sri Lanka is a country in the South Asian region and uh, what are the facilities that are available in, uh, in our setting and um, which kind of hospitals have we reached. So always try to give a summary, uh, like uh, an introduction to your setting if you are writing to a journal which is based on a developing country, something like that. So uh, idea is to know your audience when you are writing your article. Okay, so the last poll, again, uh, the, I have given you a phrase, repetition is the key to getting your message across. So think in context of a journal article and tell me your answer, agree or disagree whether you will be repeating your key points or repeating your points in uh, your uh, article.
Yasit, I'm leaving the meeting. So good seeing you. Oh, good madam. Yeah, I, I, I was not expecting you. I didn't know that you were here, madam. Oh, <laughs> it's so I, nice to see you. Yes, I, I didn't show my face today, but <laughs> good seeing oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yes, madam. Uh, so all yeah, the best. Yeah. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so I should tell the audience that uh, Dr. Dil, uh, Prof. Dilshani is uh, one of my mentors and one of my previous advisors. And mm -hmm. I, I, I was, I'm really uh, <laughs> happy to see you in this, uh, madam. Sorry, uh, sorry about not knowing that you were in here. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Take care. Okay, madam. Thank you. All the rest. Bye. Okay, I think we have like uh, seventy percent uh, answered. So I'll share the results. Ah, uh, it's I'm failing to share the results. Can you see the results now? Huh? Maybe I'll tell the result. Uh, so forty percent agree and sixty percent disagree. So. Repetition is not the key to getting your message across. That's the majority uh, thinking. Yeah. Uh, so I believe uh, your answer is correct. So do not try to repeat the same thing again and again across your in, in your journal article or in your uh, thesis. Uh, so we find it very boring when we are reading a paper if someone has repeated it again and again. So I personally have also encountered this when I have submitted to channels, they will say, okay, this paragraph of the discussion is a repetition of the introduction, so please avoid that. So even though repetition is good in your studies, but uh, don't do it when you are writing your review or the thesis or whatever. Okay, good. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, so the take home messages. Uh, so first create an outline and then start uh, putting your uh, the findings uh, from your different uh, papers into that outline and make the link. So keep it simple and try to tell a story. And secondly, critically evaluate your findings as we have done, as, we, uh, as I showed, uh, showed in the discussion, uh, the previous activity, uh, which will give you more points uh, when it comes to your review. Uh, and Thirdly, know your audience, uh, know to which journal you are writing and read about it and find out uh, how to target your audience. Okay. And finally, avoid repetition. Okay. Um, coming to the last two slides in this, uh, uh, in, uh, this uh, event, uh, because I think the committee was really interested in uh, review articles and uh, asked me to give you an outline of how to write a review article. I have incorporated these two slides in my uh, talk. So this is one article that I wrote as a like, demonstrator uh, soon after I finished my um, graduation. So I looked at how the ejaculatory ducts, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, actually the morphology of the ejaculatory ducts in the prosthetic ureter and how we can uh, prevent damage to the ejaculatory ducts when we are doing surgeries in that area. And after that, based on the results, later on, like two years after, we wrote this uh, article summarizing all the uh, reviews uh, which were available at that time. And uh, the review was morphology of the ejaculatory duct. So the basic idea is if you want to write a review article, first you have to become an expert in that field. So first you have to uh, do some research in that area and gather some knowledge and then write something like this. Otherwise uh, you will face criticism. They will say you are not an expert in this field. So how can you write a review article? Okay, the second option is always try to collaborate with someone like uh, Prof. Anthony or Prof. Malasega, so who was an expert in this field, and then you could write a summary of uh, the articles that are available. So basically, again, uh, when you are writing a review article, the idea is saying you have to summarize the findings in a critical manner, in a creative way, uh, like what I have discussed before. So nothing different. So for example, in this uh, paper, 
I tried to summarize how the dimensions of the jQuery Docs change. So tr always try to be creative, try to summarize things using graphs or charts, uh, which uh, makes it more uh, interesting to the audience. So similarly, which is a very recent article uh, I published like uh, one and a half weeks ago. Here also, similarly, we looked how a special cell repair mechanism is changing or function differently when the red blood cells are uh, forming. So again, I just want to tell, so writing a review and getting published is a little bit tricky than uh, publishing an original article. Uh, so at your point, as a medical student, always try to publish what you have done in your community research or something else rather than trying to review rather than writing a review article, which you can always develop later on. So that's my uh, uh, talk for today. So there's a homework for those who are interested. Try to write a half page summary of the article that we discussed today, which will take around one and a half to two hours. It's a lot of work, but uh, only by writing the summaries, you will learn how to improve the method of writing or learn how to write your own papers. Uh, I think I have already shared a summary, my version of the summary uh, to the committee. They will share it after this uh, session. So try to write your summary and compare what I have written and see where you can improve. Okay, that's it for uh, the talk. And now I would like to hand it over to the moderators. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Asik, for that uh, brilliant uh, session. Uh, we think, uh, I mean, certainly uh, very uh, useful uh, and it was uh, interactive as well. So uh, now is the time for your questions. So we have, um, we have about 20 minutes. We have a lot of time. So if there are any questions that you wish to um, clarify, if you wish to ask uh, Yasit, sir, now is the time. Um, and... Uh, you can uh, either unmute or you can uh, post your questions on the chat forum. So, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, until we get a question, so actually I have a question. So yeah, a lot of, of <laughs> yes, we actually have a lot of participants from the A-level 2017 batch and uh, we ourselves, uh, we have just uh, gone through the community uh, medicine research and yeah. in our report, we are expected to specifically write a chapter uh, on the literature review. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I've come across and a lot of people ask me is, I know, how do you differentiate between the introduction and the literature review? And a lot of people, you know, because you're supposed to write this special, like specific uh, chapter called the literature review. So a lot of yeah. people tend to repeat what they mentioned in the introduction. So yes. how, yes. So how do you handle yeah, uh, Very, 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 very good question. I also had the same question uh, when I was writing the literature review. So, um, it also depends on the context. So for my PhD cases, uh, or if you take US system, UK or Australian system, actually we have to incorporate everything in the literature review in the introduction. So we don't write a separate literature review, uh, but in certain disciplines, we are expected to write something in the literature, a different thing uh, in the literature review. So I also had, uh, huge conflict, what to write and how not to repeat the thing. So I actually was expecting this question. So maybe I have one a slide to share. Can you see my screen? Yes, you can see your screen. Too. Okay, so I'm stuck here. Okay. Okay. okay, so this is a base. This is the basis, basic difference between the introduction and the literature review. So, introduction is again at the beginning of the text, and literature review is located after the introduction, obviously. So, you should avoid things that you have written in the introduction in the literature review, but 
it's very difficult to write the literature review without having uh, even a little bit of uh, overlap with the introduction. So, uh, what I basically think is introduction is as the name implies, it introduces the main text to the reader. Like you have to say, uh, if I wrote the introduction for the uh, this thoracic trauma paper, I would say thoracic trauma is a major health problem, uh, uh, which has not improved over time. And we need to know the demographic patterns in uh, this. So basically my introduction would be what I have written here. And in the literature review, it's a critical analysis of the existing research on the selected research area identified the research gap. So when I'm writing the literature review, I would say, so there have been several large scale and small scale studies. And you can say these are the numbers. And uh, so in large scale, there are multi-center studies or so single center studies. So in multi-center studies, in these kind of developing countries, we found the thoracic trauma patterns are different compared to uh, the thoracic trauma patterns found in the uh, uh, developing countries. Then you can compare the numbers and critically you can say, uh, uh, like uh, this may be what is happening in the literature. So in the literature review, it's like an expansion of the introduction with the critically evaluating components. Uh, and also uh, here in the, uh, when I'm writing the literature review, I would always describe a little bit about the study setting, study design, and if it is correct to have a cohort study or uh, uh, is it all, all right to have this kind of uh, conclusions from a, uh, like a, just an observational study. So likewise, I will critically analyze the study design, study settings, and give an elaborated version of the introduction in the literature review. And also in your report, in the literature review, it's always nice to have subtopics. You can categorize these things uh, like, for example, the demographic data of thoracic trauma, and then uh, the trends in the incidence of thoracic trauma, uh, then uh, the facilities, uh, how the facilities have evolved in this. Likewise, it's like a more organized, uh, like organized uh, and an elaborated version where you critically evaluate the study details as well. So again, it's difficult, but I think I have tried to give you a basic understanding of what the difference is, but I'm also not 100% sure even at this stage, how I can write the literature review without repetition from the introduction. So, uh, but definitely in a journal article, you don't have to do this because you only have an introduction there. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, so are there any questions? Uh, uh, now would be uh, the best opportunity for our participants to you know, ask their questions before they themselves embark on the literature review uh, when they are doing their uh, own studies. So, Yeah, so uh, you don't have to only ask questions about literature review. It's all right if Hi. you want to ask <laughs> anything else or anything uh, outside of this paper, anything on how to you know publish your stuff, anything. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, <laughs> right. Uh... Uh, I have a question. It's actually yeah. not related to the literature review. It's about the justification okay. that we include in the introduction part. Is it yeah. to justify why we select the topic? Or do we have to justify other things such as why we selected this setting or what are the things that we have to justify in the justification? Yes, yes good. So justification actually uh, in a journal article, it's like one or two paragraphs. So you can't justify everything in the uh, journal article, uh, but try to give a summary of it. But uh, in your report, uh, you can have a big paragraph on justification. So. First thing that you have to justify is, is this question reasonable? So are you just repeating something else's research or why, what is new in this research? So that is the first thing that you have to say. 
And then in the justification, obviously you can say if others have used a different study uh, like uh, method, like say they have all used observation methods, but to answer this question, you need a uh, like a cohort study or something like that. So you can justify that also there. So number one is the question, but if you find something uh, unique in your research methods or uh, yeah, so if you find something unique, then you can always put that also in the justification. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, you can use the uh, chat box as well. We have about 10 minutes. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, sir, I actually have another question. So let's say, yes. um, okay, you are reviewing one particular aspect of a particular topic. Let's say um, uh, maybe you are reviewing, um, let's say, uh, an aspect pertaining to the knowledge, attitudes, and practices of a particular subject. In your literature review, would you have to sort of review all of the aspects of, uh, let's say, a particular condition you're studying? So let's say uh, in addition to you know reviewing the you know, knowledge attitudes and practices of that particular thing in previous studies would you also have to like review the treatment and the all of the other things that you are not going to study in your study as well again a very good question very good question so uh, what i would write is uh, so another very important thing in writing is uh, focus your writing so uh, if you are only looking at a particular aspect of knowledge or whatever, so don't try to describe the things that you are not going to tell. So it just makes the reader boring. So always from the very first sentence, you have to focus and write only about this. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can't write a long, um, in, um, long literature review or long introduction. I know there are like uh, guidelines to say this many uh, numbers should be there in a report. But when it comes to journal articles, they say this is the maximum limit, but nobody says this is the minimum limit. And now uh, the trend is more and more journals like to have very small introductions rather than the low introductions that we had like years before. So always try to summarize things, focus things, and try to write it in a succinct manner rather than describing the unnecessary things. I think I hope I, un uh, I answered that question. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. thank you. Uh, right. So, okay, we will maybe wait for a few more minutes and. Again, uh, like uh, Yasid, uh, Dr. Yasid mentioned, it doesn't have to be about the literature review. It can be any question that you have about uh, student level research. Uh, that maybe you want to do uh, in addition to the community medicine report one day. Uh, so, yes. Right. Uh, so we have a question from Gitna. So uh, what should be considered when upscaling a research previously done by yourself? Uh, I don't know what he really means by that. Uh, uh, Git oh, okay. Uh, upscaling means... Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gitna, can you elaborate? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Me. yes, please. So first, uh, suppose you uh, limited your study setting to like a certain district. And now you are yeah. planning on going for a larger uh, like uh, sample size as well as uh, like more widespread study setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sense, that's what I meant by upscaling research. So okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Should be made uh, other than feasibility. Okay, yeah, you have a valid point. So, like, if I have done a very small study, uh, is it good to do a large scale study using the same method? So, uh, I would say it's kind of tricky. So, if I have already published it, and if you are just trying to gather a bigger sample size and replicate it, most of the journals will not like to publish it because it's just a repetition, but maybe with a uh, uh, little bit of increased sample size. But uh, on the other hand, so I will give you one example. So 
uh, uh, one of my so uh, there are patients with strokes like you have a blood clot in the brain and it uh, it uh, severely compromises the balance so we were interested in looking at how to rehabilitate these patients how can we make them walk again with good balance so there was one study where people have tried to use a balance board kind of a thing uh, in uh, in improving this so what they have done is they have tried using 3d simulators computers and various other hi-fi stuff and try to improve their balance using a tech a technique. So what we actually did was we used a simple, uh, you know, a simple thing like a balance. Uh, you might have heard of this thing called wobble board or balance board. It's like a simple platform where you can just wobble here and there. And using this method, can we improve it? So it's kind of uh, applying the same principle, but in a resource poor setting. Uh, and also they. Uh, we, for the first time, did a randomized control clinical trial uh, in a very large population. And we found a very good result that we can use something like this in uh, improving the balance. So again, you can improve what others have done based on their ideas in case they haven't done a proper job. So say they have never done a clinical trial, but they have just said they have tried something, a high five method in a very developed country to improve balance without a proper control group. Yes, in that case, you can have a bigger sample size, a better, better method and do that. But if you're just trying to improve the sample size and uh, check the knowledge and attitude in another sample, well, it is a bit uh, tricky when it comes to publications. Uh, so better to avoid those kind of things unless there's a drast drastic improvement in your research methods and the uh, quality of your research. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, any other questions? We have uh, three more minutes till we conclude the session for today. Uh, right. So it appears there are no questions. So I think we can call it a day. Uh, so I think. Uh, We've uh, answered all the questions. Okay, uh, so, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Yasip Matanga Singh for being present with us here today and for uh, conducting uh, today's session. It was a very informative uh, and interactive session. And uh, I think uh, we are now very well equipped uh, to you know, conduct our own literature reviews. And uh, hope, I hope uh, all our participants are now inspired to uh, do a better job with their own studies. So uh, we hope to see you yet again uh, with another uh, journal club session organized by the medical faculty research community. Uh, and um, yes, uh, I think we can call it a day for now. And uh, so thank you all for joining. Uh, stay, uh, stay safe and uh, see you all soon.